Hey, Jason. Welcome to Leading is Serving Podcast. Chris, good to see you today. It's good to see you too. Yeah. You've been out uh, fighting for the highest good of others? Absolutely. Every day. Every, every day. All day. I try. Right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not perfect, but you know, I, I know. try. I know. I, I definitely try. hit stages where I'm like, I just, I mean, taking care of yourself is part of it. So, right. Right. You know. This is true. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not which, selfish. Which is part of the highest good of others, right? Absolutely. Right? We, Bring we, your best self. We we talk about that. That's right. You can't give away what you don't possess. That's exactly so, right. Yeah. But Speaking of all that great stuff. Man. Um, I mean, we're just really excited that we're, you know, in this season of interviews. You yeah. know, I mean, just really excited. We got a great guest today. Mm -hmm. um, but as we get close to the interview, we just want to encourage you to jump over to leadingisserving.com and give us a rating or view. Let us know that you're listening. Um, shoot us an email. Let us know. You know, you can send a voicemail and stuff like that. It's super cool. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited about this this new year with these these uh, new business owners that we haven't. Um, so I'm sure we'll bring a couple back because we might. Uh, I know that things change. Yeah, and I'm always excited about that new stuff. But I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to these new business owners. Yeah. So let's let's get to it. Okay. Our let's... guest today is Amy Kandrak. Mm -hmm. um, she is the owner of a software company and don't necessarily think techie in this mm -hmm. because um, she doesn't code. <laughs> she, <laughs> does, she doesn't write software. <laughs> she okay. cares for people. And so she owns a, a software service called What Friends Do and mm -hmm. um, just has done some amazing work in the area of care. Of when you have a loved one going into crisis mm -hmm. or a good friend, or maybe they're local, maybe they're not, but this is a way to bring everything from, you know, uh, like she compares it, I think, to like Meal Train and the uh, Caring Bridge, Caring Bridge and yep. GoFundMe. And, you know, I mean, there's some services that we were familiar with, but this does it all in one spot. That's amazing. And um, yeah, just to hear her concern for people and then her passion for business. I'm really yeah. excited to hear this. Yeah, so, I am too. I'm that. That's a lot. I'm looking forward I know. to this. Let's, let's, let's chat with her. All right. We're going to jump over. All right. Well, Amy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you joined us. Yeah. Thanks for having so, me. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so I am an Indianapolis native. I grew up. Um, kind of in the Midtown North Side area, went to IPS elementary schools, graduated mm -hmm. from North Central High School, and ended up um, meeting my husband in college, and we ended up moving to Hawaii for a little while. Oh, nice. Great life decision. Fun. Right? I know, right? <laughs> um, you, where'd you go to college here? Um, I went to the University of Illinois. Okay. So did majored in uh, majored in sociology and history with a minor in French. Oh wow! All right, and mm -hmm. you use French every day. Uh, yeah, I think the last time I used French, <laughs> the uh, I was in France about twenty years ago, and the server was like, "Would you prefer if we speak in English?" <laughs> <laughs> that's yes, uh -huh. I was like, "Yeah, that's probably the best." Uh huh. So. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> moved back from Hawaii. Uh, actually, we like we were both doing random jobs mm -hmm. and teaching in a high school, and the whole state went on strike um, because the teachers' union is the whole state. Oh wow! Mm. And we couldn't afford to live there anymore. Gotcha. Oh, wow. um, moved back to Illinois for a little while. My husband decided to go to med school. Oh, I had two babies and. My family was still here in Indianapolis okay. and got a call from my mom one night um, that a loved one, my sister's very best friend, um, was diagnosed with brain cancer. Mm. And she needed to kind of organize everything, wow. right? Laura was yeah. like my little sister. Oh, well. And we wanted to do great things for her. Mm -hmm. um, Plus, tell everyone what was going on. We were already, my mom and sister were like the people in the hospital every day, oh, sharing wow. information from the family to kind of the masses, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Laura was 25 and was just wonderful, wow. right? Oh, and wow. had friends all over the country. So we were emailing people, trying mm -hmm. to get things going. And um, as we were doing all of this, 
I got this phone call from my mom, and she said, you know what we're doing for Laura? We need to figure out a way to do this for other people. Mm. Um, hmm. And so, again, like, I've got two babies under the age of three. Oh, wow. I'm working <laughs> full time. My husband's in med school, and my mom calls and says, let's start a business. Oh. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. That's easy. Uh huh. Yeah. I could totally do that. <laughs> um, right. And let's start an internet business. Right. And the last coding class that I took was in eighth grade at Shortridge when it was a junior high school. Oh. Um, right. So coding not really in my background uh -huh. in that like sociology, history, French major. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So um, anyway, started a technology company and an online. Software service. Just because you had nothing else <laughs> to do. Because, you know, yeah. that's what I was doing. Right, so right. <coughs> that was a couple years ago now. I was going to say, like, so when, when did that hit? So that went live. Obviously, you had plenty of things going on. But what, mm -hmm. when did that actually officially so that take off? that actually started um, like 2007, 2008. Okay. Okay. And started as a consumer company called What Friends Do and mm -hmm. um, went, you know, live all all yeah. across the country um wow. actually wow. pretty worldwide mm -hmm. because everybody's connected right and right, so right. you right. don't have people just in indianapolis who are mm -hmm. using your services when you're online if your friends are other places they mm -hmm. that right. was that was one of the things we were trying to do was make the connections er right. easier now we want to dive into the business but did backing up did you learn coding oh, or no. did you find people we found How people did, because that's part of what we want to talk about is mm -hmm. how did you get that start? What did you go through in those early days? So obviously it wasn't easy because there was plenty of other things pulling on you. So take us right. through so some, take of, us that, through that some of that transition. Um, so it was a lot of hours in my basement at night after my kids went to bed thinking through how do I want to interact with this web service? Mm -hmm. And how do I want, like, this was in you know, 2006, 2007, 2008. We're planning all of this. Mm -hmm. okay. The number of websites and web services, software services, not anything like what it is currently. Right, okay. Right. But looked at sites that had similar functionality and went through and started kind of storyboarding. Like, what does this look like? Mm -hmm. How, what do we want to have? Um, and wrote down just so many details of what we wanted to do, what we wanted to have, how did we want people to experience this site? Um, and then started shopping it around to programmers hmm. to say, hmm. you know, we want to build something like this. Mm -hmm. right. um, how much is it going to cost? Is this something that's feasible? How do we, how do we make this work? Hmm. Um, there were not a lot of off the shelf plugin options mm -hmm. at that point. Right. So we were doing, you know, pretty custom site yeah. development. Yeah. Was there a lot of pushback from that? Just trying to figure that all out? Like, did you get a lot of people like, nah, I don't want to do anything like that? Um, <coughs> you know, I don't remember. I remember interviewing a lot of people and using kind of more of, do I really want to work with this person? Mm -hmm. Um, mm. Which may or may not be the best choice. Um, Developers are their own wonderful breed of human, <laughs> and <Yeah>. I, um, <laughs> I I love them, but they're... They have their gifts. They have their gifts. Um, mm -hmm. So went through quite a few different developers at different points. Okay, right. Um, you know, I, because I'm not a coder, I liken this, and I hope you can appreciate this analogy, I liken it to building a house mm -hmm. or doing a kitchen build, mm -hmm. not necessarily yeah. just renovation, right? And I know how I want it to look in the end. Mm -hmm. I know that I want all of my toilets to flush mm -hmm. and my <laughs> and <the water laughs> lights to, to work and the water to run. Yeah. And when I, like, turn the light switch on, the... the water shouldn't run right you know right. <laughs> like i i know that this is how i want it to go mm -hmm. um but i also know that i need like a contractor to do that yeah 
Right. Yeah. Um, and not only do I need a contractor to do that, I need a plumber and an electrician and a drywaller and a painter mm -hmm. and probably a designer to help me with the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. So I understand those kinds of things. But I think the same thing goes for building technology. Mm -hmm. And I didn't necessarily understand that when I was going into it. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I knew that in the end, I was like, I want a green button here to say go and collect this kind of information. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so looking for that team chemistry mm -hmm. that you know you can communicate with, that you know that you can communicate your vision mm -hmm. and get, I mean, you know, skills are skills. Right. right. And when you don't know how to evaluate those skills, it's more right. about how can you communicate. And so that's brilliant. That's well done. Mm. Well, and I hear thanks. your sociology background shaping the interaction on the website, yeah. which well, is really cool. It, it has been really fun. Um, I've had the opportunity to kind of go back to quite a few colleges, um, mm -hmm. especially in like the liberal arts area, and say, I think your liberal arts degree is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, understanding how communities work, mm -hmm. I had no idea that it would take me to building, you know, online communities. Um, right. But... It that's has. Neat. It's been kind of fun. That's awesome. Man, that's cool. So, All right, so take us into, um, you mentioned that there were some other services that you looked at that kind of do some of the things that you guys do mm -hmm. at What Friends Do, but how do you guys differentiate? What or Tell us first, what do you do, and how is that different from other things out there? Right, so um, we are kind of a one-stop shop for everything that you might need outside of the hospital walls. Um and outside of whatever your, you know, crisis is happening. We tend to do a lot in the healthcare space, um, mm -hmm. cancer space. That's where people generally use us. So we know that the first thing that happens when something is going on is people want to know what it, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so rather than having to send 50 bajillion texts mm -hmm. um, or tell your story a thousand times, <coughs> we right. have a blog to keep people updated on what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, we also know that the first thing people think of is, hey, can I bring you food? Mm -hmm. um, right. And food is fantastic, but there's a lot of other stuff that can be done. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. People need help getting to and from appointments. People need help with their kids. People need help with their pets. People need help with their yard. Yeah. Um, and so we have a calendar that really was the first of its kind where people could go and see a need that was posted by the family and mm. s individually sign up to help with that. Mm. That's cool. Um, and then we've also integrated um, an Amazon wish list because mm. a lot of times you need things, right. um, you know, and people who aren't close by want to be able to help as well. So right. sending gift cards to your favorite restaurants mm -hmm. or, you know, if you've had some sort of medical accident, um, right. you might need to outfit your house differently mm -hmm, right. or you need a new pillbox or you just need something fun to do and you know yeah. distract yourself. Right. Having that Amazon wish list is there. So um, we are kind of, I like to say, a combination of Caring Bridge, Meal Train, GoFundMe, and Amazon wish list all in one. Oh, wow. That's cool. Um, so... And then the other differentiator that we have is we, um, being a B2C company is really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of marketing dollars. Mm -hmm. And when we were really working hard on this, like 2015, we didn't have the marketing dollars. So we switched our business model and went more B2B and okay. offered a white labeled service to, um, started out in healthcare offering mm -hmm. hospital systems the white-labeled service to for their patients. Hmm. Um, and in that, like, pivot, we uh, <laughs> realized that, like, we needed to upgrade the software and technology, um, mm -hmm. needed to get a little bit... At that point, we were using only contractors, mm -hmm. wanted to be able to bring some stuff in-house, wanted to be able to scale at a different level. Right and went after venture capital. And oh, I was wow. actually the first woman in the state of Indiana to close venture funding over $500,000. Wow. And that oh, was wow. in 2016. Congratulations. And I, thank you very much. That's super cool. Wow. Um, yeah. I, but I, I mentioned that because I hope that 
people in Indiana especially realize like venture funding is very difficult. Mm. 2016 was the first time a woman founder, CEO, closed venture funding over a half a million dollars. Wow. Wow. Um, and there are not very many of us since then. Since either. Really? Yeah. Who have been able to hmm. do that. Um, Indiana ranks like 47 or 48 in venture funding for female entrepreneurs. Really? Okay. Huh. It is not great. Wow. Um, so just as a little side note for everyone, <laughs> right. venture funding for, for female entrepreneurs specifically in this state, we really need to support them wow. a lot. Mm. Hmm. Those are things I've just yeah never never looked into. I agree. I'd Much less, I mean, it makes sense. There's stats around that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots Very of stats cool. around. So there was a lot of work there that went into that. There was so a lot of work there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. what would be what would be the one of the easy ways for people to support that? Um, learn about venture capital. Okay. Right? Learn about investing in. Mm -hmm not only your friends, mm -hmm. but in the other organizations and other startups that are going on. Okay. Um, there are a lot of regulations around venture capital funding, mm -hmm. um, and I am not an expert in that, but there are a lot of organizations in town who are experts on this. Mm -hmm. okay. um, there are a lot of ways that you can well, I get nervous because I have too many friends who are lawyers who will probably be like, Amy, stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah. You crossed the line. <laughs> you, the SEC regulations around right. venture funding, like like there are a lot of um, rules. But there are a lot of groups in town that will teach you about venture funding. Um, mm -hmm. okay. I have quite a few friends who are working on teaching females specifically. Okay about oh, cool. how to invest and how to invest in women-owned businesses. But I think there's another issue here, um, which is I think a lot of female entrepreneurs don't realize that they have the opportunity to have a scalable company mm -hmm. that is investable. Right. Oh, right. Um, and that's very Midwest-specific. Hmm. Um, that's interesting. And so, so just starting to think differently mm -hmm. around right. how are you building your business? Is this something that could be scalable, that is investable? Mm -hmm. um, do mm -hmm. you have a market large enough for this? Did it take some growth for you to get to that point where you could be like, hey, I want to take this to the next level. I want to think about this a little differently. Well. <clears throat> or did you gosh. already know from the beginning that you kind of, this is the way you were going? So when we started this, we really wanted it to be a largely utilized consumer product, but I had no idea what that meant hmm. to okay. make it happen, right? Hmm. Like I knew um, how communities worked. I knew how, what needed to happen to change one person's life. Um, but, but moving the scalability of that, I didn't mm -hmm. know the details of. Okay. And I think it took me a lot of years to learn all of that. I never sat in a business class mm -hmm. um, until I was teaching one, really. <laughs> right. That's a great time to learn. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but so I was learning things like what's your total addressable market in mm. for like larger services as I was going. Mm. I was learning about building a pitch deck as I was building my pitch deck. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, right. And getting myself to that point, realizing that I needed the money. Uh -huh. to get somewhere was really the first step, okay. right? Hmm. So I we had been, you know, getting small loans, pulling from our savings accounts, right. um, doing all of this kind of stuff, trying to maybe figure out equity. We weren't making a ton of money. Like, there's no right. equity to really right. give away at that point, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so realizing we needed real dollars, Mm -hmm. to make this move. Um, and, an, and and I'm teaching a business class right now, and the thing that I teach my students, number one, is you need to utilize your network. Mm -hmm. um, there are people in town who know this kind of information. Mm -hmm. You need to connect with them. Mm -hmm. You need to connect with the people who are the lawyers, who are the bankers, who do invest in other things, um, and learn from them and lean on their expertise. Mm -hmm. Well, and you, I mean, you would say, would you not 
uh, that you had to bring something of value to help them understand that they wanted to invest into it in the process of it too, right? So right. You have to have, you can't be, um, it's great to and tap into your network, but you also have to bring something that encourages that idea of investing into, right? Right, right. So, okay. so we had a product, mm -hmm. um, but I had to then show the value of it, right? right? Okay, mm -hmm. so now I've got one hospital client, three hospital clients. This is how much money they are. Like, you just have to show investors the dollars, right? Yep. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're going for real venture money and right. not just angel money. Because then it's just all numbers. Because then it's like, okay, if I give you $100,000, how soon until I get a million? Mm -hmm. right. And you got to have your projections out there. And, <laughs> I mean, they're not all. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Well, like let's, let's have a plan for a, best, yes. right? yeah. for a best, reason. They're best case predictions. Yeah. 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 So so putting all of that together, there are very um, templated pitch decks mm -hmm. that investors mm -hmm. are used to looking at. Mm -hmm. um, and they make a lot of sense. Okay. Right? They're, you know, nobody really cares about your product, yeah. but you still need to tell them what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your total addressable market? Um what are your projections? How fast until you get there? Mm -hmm. What's your exit strategy? Right. Who's mm. your team? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm making that up off the top of my head. I know there are like, right. there's more there's like nine other. or 10 things that right. you really, really want to have on those. Um, right. But if you can't mm. answer those questions, you're not going to be ready for an investor. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and there are a lot of very, very smart and savvy investors in this town mm -hmm. who can teach you. Um, okay. And places like um, Vision Tech, TechPoint, um, they, they'll teach you how to invest. Mm. Okay. Um, and they will have open pitch nights. Um, Powder Keg is great okay. for um, going and learning about all the startups that are in town. Really? And they'll have a pitch night once once a month at least, hmm. and you can listen to hmm. you know the thirty second or one minute pitch for all the startups um, that are coming through. There are a lot of so great. It's like the modern day um, Shark Tank mini version for Indianapolis. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> That's awesome. Pretty wow. much, um, and well, and there are a lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of great incubators that are happening in Indianapolis right now. Also, mm -hmm. G Beta has some really good stuff going on. They've got really fun. Um, companies in their pipeline right now. Oh, cool. um, and these incubators, if you're already familiar with them, I don't need to go into the detail, but in general, what they are going to do is um, anywhere between just concept and small startup, they will bring you in with a team of really smart, savvy entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who can come and say, okay, let's really work on your marketing strategy mm -hmm. and let's get this ready. Let's really work on your financial projections because I think that your business model isn't solid enough. Um, how can we test it with people who are already in our network to say, you know, this is what you're charging is not going to actually get you anywhere because you don't know what the other costs of goods and services are. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then they'll teach you how to pitch. Right, there is a really, a, there's an art to pitching. Mm -hmm. There's an art to standing up in front of 100 people who are, you know, judging everything you say. Right, right. <laughs> Every word you say. Every Sounds word like you fun. say. <laughs> and you have 30 seconds and then they're going to clap you off stage. <laughs> um, no, seriously. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, you start with legit. the slow clap and then by the, you got to, you got to really? be done. Um wow. And this is going on all over the city right now. That's it's cool. really great. Um, you know, the Innovation Showcase generally happens. I think Elevate Ventures puts that on mm -hmm. okay. along with TechPoint. Um, and these places, again, they're not always open to the public, but a lot of these are. And they might have like a 5 or $10 entry fee for some right. of them. Mm -hmm. um, cool. But if you want to learn about them, yeah. there's a yeah. lot of opportunity. That is sure. super cool. So... so Question then. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to 2016, when you got the venture mm -hmm. capital, right? Mm -hmm. What has that enabled you to do in the what six seven years since? Yeah. So it enabled us to um, revamp our technology. Um, in order to be scalable, we had to have a different backend 
that mm -hmm. really was, like I said, scalable. Not 07. Not 07. <laughs> mm. tech, okay. right? right. Um, we needed APIs that could talk to all of the other APIs mm -hmm. in hospital and pharmaceutical marketing clouds right. so that they could get the information that they needed. And um, we needed to build APIs for iOS and apps. Yeah. Um, and so the money allowed us to build apps for the back end for our business partners. Mm -hmm. um, it allowed us to have a team who could start selling into um, into businesses mm -hmm. and into healthcare. And full transparency, things were going really great until COVID. We got some of our largest clients, um, some pharmaceutical companies who were excited to have our product as a digital offering for mm -hmm. um, their patients before their drug launched. Um, oh, wow. Right? It's, they wanted to first of all show, we really care about you as a person. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to support you. Um, but for them, it increases, like that's great for their brand. Mm. Right. And yeah. twofold. And then um, there, again, Lawyers, please don't get mad at me for this. Like, because I know that it was all kosher and above the board. Um, right. But, but they could differentiate their patient from the, you know, 45 family members and friends who were on there. And then they could send information out about other resources that they might have. Mm -hmm. um, and we launched with our then largest... Um, pharmaceutical company on March 9th of 2020 and um, great timing mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, and it went nowhere really fast uh -oh. because yeah. the world shut down right we had five in-person conferences we were we were supposed to present and launch this product to nurse navigators all across the country we couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. We were oh, wow. trying to figure out how to get this product in like Zoom conferences, but everybody was too overwhelmed. Yeah, right. Right. there was a lot going on. There was on. so much going on. Um, and, and then additionally, in the hospital networks where we were, um, we were in a workflow with um, nurse navigators, social work, um, child life specialists, et cetera those types of people providing our service to the families. Mm -hmm. And that, that just didn't, it just, people were overwhelmed. Right. Mm -hmm. um, right. It, so it had to be frustrating and even just heartbreaking yeah. to know that when the world shuts down, the, we need a digital resource. Right. Right. But just getting the basic care mm -hmm. was so overwhelming mm -hmm. that, those you're yeah it just gets pushed to the back yeah Goodness. it just got pu pushed to the back so that yeah. was a, that was a pretty big blow for us Absolutely. Um, I'm sure. and has been a really huge hit on the company like mm. it's been a really yeah. huge hit on the company we mm. have um uh, hopefully i'm going to be announcing a really exciting new service line soon um oh. that i think is going to change care a little bit um cool. and i think will help us differentiate from Caring Bridge and Meal Train oh, cool. and those mm. types of places. Um, the care economy is really starting to take off digitally more, especially mm -hmm. as people are aging. Um, I mean, people are always aging, right? right, but right, right. The right aging right. population increases um, in numbers, and they're looking for digital resources. Um, so we're hoping to um, really soon launch something that can differentiate that and can help people a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But in the process of all of this, I, I was in a kind of a sad spot with my company. Like, I didn't know what we wanted to do. I didn't know if we wanted to continue. Um, mm -hmm. I was yeah. looking for buyers and mm -hmm. looking for acquisition and had lunch with a couple of female entrepreneurs who are really good friends of mine. We got together on 4th of July because that was the only day that, you know, we were all free. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. And I was um, kind of sharing some of this, sharing that, you know, one day I kind of want to write a book. I've got this idea. I've had this outline, but I haven't been able to get it out of my head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends said, Amy, why don't you start a podcast? 
podcast, you can talk like nobody else. <laughs> I was like, oh, this, this is true. Take my um, strength. And, uh, <laughs> and um, anyway, that was on 4th of July. And on November 5th, I launched um, the first season with 13 episodes of my podcast. And we're in season two right now. That's mm. exciting. And I am loving it yeah that's awesome so what's the name of your podcast so my podcast is called what friends do kitchen chats all right and it is called kitchen chats because when something major happens in life i call my friends and we sit in the kitchen and figure out what what's next right what do we need to do right and so that's what i'm doing with all of my guests we record it in my kitchen and that's so fun um uh and we just start diving into some of those really important topics that um, mm-hmm. need to be addressed when something major happens in your life. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. So it's been fun. Are you using that as uh, as also part of your your website? So they're you're running them hand in hand together. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Very cool. That's exciting. Very cool. It is really ha- exciting. Has it given new life to you for your other for your business that you? Yes. That's exciting. That's super cool. It's been, um, I forgot how much creative energy that I had. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, I think being an entrepreneur is way more creative than people like to necessarily mm. give it credit. Yeah. And um, it gets really lonely sometimes. Uh, I'm yeah. slightly more extroverted than introverted. Mm-hmm. And I get ideas from talking to people and from yeah. talking to friends. Yeah. And yeah. I needed that energy. Yeah, absolutely. And COVID definitely killed that. COVID so much killed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the uh, for the extroverts in the world, that was a rough time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There were some introverts who were like, no, this is fine for a little while. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think it was my husband's best years of his life. <laughs> I mean, right. he was like so excited. And every night my kids are like, Oh my God, Dad! Are we having family dinner again? <laughs> 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 I went. I went for drives, and there was nobody on the street because I just had to get out of the house. Uh-huh. I was like, I have to. I have to get out. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the scope of what friends do, of um, your team, uh, the people that you impact worldwide. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us a little bit about the scope of where you guys are at today. Right now, we're all virtual. Um, okay. And um, which is which is exciting, and luckily we went virtual before COVID, oh, um, that's cool. and we are kind of in a rebuilding phase. Um, we have people who are almost all contract, um, mm-hmm. but working. I actually don't even know where everyone's based right now, mm. um, but I am really excited because right after this, um, I'm meeting my virtual assistant for the very first time because she lives here on the south side of Indy. That's cool. And we've been working together for five years. That's awesome. And um, we're going to meet in person, like I said, for the first time. That is so fun. Um, we have, like I said, um, users are worldwide. And mm. we have about 45,000 active users right okay. now. Um, mm. So that is people who are logging in um, and interacting at least one time mm-hmm. on the website every month. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's kind of how we look at look at that right now. And mm-hmm. we're looking for, you know, we're always looking for new B2B partners. So if mm-hmm. anybody has um, a, any kind of helping organization that wants their own branded software, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like churches, um, healthcare providers, there's a lot of different opportunity out there um, mm-hmm. to have this service for your your clients and your mm-hmm. patients and yeah. your constituents. Right. Right. So we're, I'm ready to hire another salesperson. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. That's to, to kind of move on to that. The genesis of all this has been how do we care for people better? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And I know we've kind of got off on all the business stuff and venture capital, you know, all these fun things, right? Mm -hmm. But when we think about serving others and we're through serving, we're leading them toward health, right? That's Mm -hmm. exactly what you guys are doing. You're trying to catalyze a community around a person that's in crisis. Mm -hmm. Right. What is one of the things that 
but like you said earlier, we, we go right to food. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can bring a meal. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that, that doesn't go well with us because, you know, we just don't like onions. And oh, no, food no, you is not allowed in my house. Five million times. Yeah. Right. And so why is it not allowed in your house? Um, my son is deathly allergic to tree nuts. Like he's yeah. been in the ICU for like anaphylactic nut allergies before. Oh, well. So unless you like, don't want to do that again. Th- so no, we yeah. just don't. D- but I can use help in other ways. Right. So mm-hmm. what is what is maybe something that you've seen that's frustrating in that process for families mm. that just like world get this under wraps. Come on. <laughs> well, we need to understand this. So. I've got a short story Go that it. I'll share with you that I think kind of epitomizes what I see as the biggest hurdle. Okay. So um, before my kids could drive, um, my husband was working out of town one night, and I needed to go to the grocery to get something for dinner, and I was hit by a car in the parking lot as I was walking in. And I ended up with a broken foot and a broken wrist. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And we've... I ended up having to have some surgery on my foot. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you know, you're like, I'm on crutches, but I can't really carry my coffee cup even. Um, My kids can't drive. They still have to get to school. They still have to get all of these things. I've maybe mentioned what my company does. Um, But there was a small intervention in my house one night because I refused to need a What Friends Do page to help me. Because I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. Yeah. Nobody needs to help. I don't. I don't need uh, to have a website to let anyone help me. Um, and that's the biggest problem that I see. Okay. People don't want to have to ask for help mm-hmm. when they are literally laying on their back with mm-hmm. their foot up and can't even get their own flipping coffee cup. Right. Um, hmm. I didn't need long-term help, right, and right. I had my mom and my sister who the burden was falling on Uh to take care of everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm so fortunate to have a ton of friends who wanted to help me. Right. That's awesome. And I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. I don't need anything. (laughs) But if I can do one thing like long-term globally, Mm -hmm. what I would love to be able to do is destigmatize asking for help and receiving help. It Uh, is so hard. It is so uncomfortable. Yeah. What do you think the barrier is that we would rather lie in our own misery? Right. (laughs) Right. Rather than to just ask for a simple help of like... Well, if I knew the answer to that, I probably would have a lot more going on. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) That's probably true. I'm sorry. (laughs) But I mean, we think, I think about that all the time in terms of our pride and our ego. Right. Why... Well, and the and the the hardest part is when the when the situation is flipped. I want to like, uh, yeah, I'm helping you. Mm-hmm. Hello, right. you're frustrated right. because like, they won't I'm let so you. I'm so frustrated yeah. because you won't let me. Um, it is an honor. It is a privilege for you to allow me to help you with something. Mm. Right. Um, and of course, I want to do this. This is not like. This is one of the highest priorities in my life is helping someone else. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel good, right? Like there's some selfishness Mm -hmm. going on here. (laughs) It does. Let's just keep it real. I love it. Absolutely. Keep going. Like there is some selfishness where you're like, oh, I am able to help someone and I feel good about it. Right. Right. Um, But it just feels weird to let other people do it until it's Mm -hmm. happening. And then you're like, that was a lot better because I didn't like everybody yeah. feels good now. Like I have food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like somebody brought us dinner tonight. And there's a burden off your shoulders. Right. Right. Burdens off my shoulders. And like there are real statistics out there from the World Health Organization that people who have stronger social support networks have better health outcomes. Hmm. Huh. So we know that when you have that social structure support network around you, you're going to do better Mm -hmm. because you can't do it all alone. Uh Right. None of us have built our businesses by ourselves. This is so true. None of us have, you know, 
None of us are really raising our kids by ourselves. It takes yeah. a village. It yep. takes a village. It takes a village. Mm-hmm. And if we can't lean into that village um, when we really need it, right. we're not going to be able to get better. Or when we, we need to. don't need right. it that much, just some. Just, just like little. you said, like a short time when you were hurt. Right. You needed it for a short yeah. time. You didn't need it for the rest of your life. You just needed it for the time for you to heal. Right. And go through that process. Yeah. And... Yeah. and and a beautiful thing can happen from that, right? right? Like you can, the stories that we hear on a daily basis from people saying, oh my gosh, I had no idea these people cared about me. Like right. like someone who I haven't had contact with in 10 years reaches out, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Or your next door neighbor who you now get to talk to more regularly. Maybe mm-hmm. you haven't had a reason to talk to them before or it's weird or you think that you're not, I don't know. I mean, right. there's all kinds of stories that people tell themselves about why you're not supposed to rely on each other. Right. Um, <laughs> well, but, but yeah, seriously. Like, it is. So last week on my podcast, I had um, a friend on and he is the vice president for the Red Cross for the Western United States. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we were talking about how to help people when there's a natural disaster. And he was able to say that they have research showing that um, they can predict the outcome of an individual in a natural disaster based on how strong or and how close they are to their neighbors and how close Mm. they are to their their support network. So they can go through different communities and say, we know that this community is all like they're all connected. Mm -hmm. Mm. They're going to be so much better off than another community. Wow. That's amazing. And by close, you're not just saying proximity. I am not saying proximity. Right. Connection I am and saying relationship. there's connection, there's relationship. Um, yeah. They, they can text each other. Mm-hmm. They can mm-hmm. say, hey, did you know there's a storm coming? Mm-hmm. And we should all be going to the basement because there's a tornado, right? Mm-hmm. Or there's a winter storm coming. I'm going to the store. Do you need anything? Do you need anything? Right. Or, That's or awesome. I'm, I know that... Your wife's about to have a baby. I'm going to make sure your driveway's clear, mm. so that you can get to the hospital on time. Right. That's all. Without having to think about that. Right. Right. These are things that any of us would be more than willing to do. Like you're not going out of your way to help somebody else. Right. I mean, you are, mm-hmm. but that didn't mean to sound flippant with it. But right. there are little things that we can do, and mm-hmm. you can just say, "Wow, thanks. That really feels Make. good to yeah. know that somebody cares yeah. about you." Absolutely. So. Good. And what's cool with what friends do is that you're. You're basically bringing that that community globally mm-hmm. into closeness digitally. Right. Yeah. That, which is amazing. You know, I'm thinking about we've we've got some friends that um, <clears throat> lived in Ukraine mm-hmm. prior to the war, um, helping with mm-hmm. transition homes for kids that aged out of foster care, but they're not quite adults and they don't have the life skills to really succeed in life. And you can imagine where that goes. Right. You know, especially for the young females and so they are working in these this transition gap of helping you know and then the war comes and they actually happen to be stateside when it occurred and so something like this that could have catalyzed Mm -hmm. their global community would have been really cool because they're Mm. back and forth to to the check and you know right and just what a what a valuable resource i mean that's really cool and one of the other things that we talked about before we hit record (laughs) right um is is the busyness. Right. And yeah. this is something that, you know, kind of like, you know, you were saying, I, I, I owned the website oh, and yeah. I didn't want to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I hear all the time, like, you know, oh, you, you know, I just didn't want to ask you because you're so busy, Chris. Yeah. You know, uh, you're just so busy. I, d- I didn't want to put a burden on you. Yeah. And, you know, we. And, and what is your response? Are you, because when someone says that to me, because they're like, Amy, you're so busy, I'm like, you, sorry, I'm hitting the table. Here. You're good. You but, can go for it. But <laughs> I do, because I want to just, I'm like, you are my friend. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. care about you. Right. Nothing else that yeah. I am doing is more important than me helping right. you. Right. Right. Yeah. We're busy because we fill our time up. Right. right. Naturally. When it's empty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I can move things around right. for yes. you. And that's not a burden. And that right. is not a burden. Not at all. Yeah. And... If you ask me to do something that I don't want to do, like walk your dog, I don't walk people's dogs because I can't pick up the dog poop. I really <laughs> hate it. Um, then I will say, you know, I'm not sure if I can help you with that, but instead could I do X, Y, and Z? Right. 
Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, I'll pay someone else to walk your dog <laughs> so that I don't get like right. yeah. That's yeah. my that's my line though. Right. But I'll mm-hmm. but I'll do all kinds of other things for you. And one of the and that's um another really lovely part about offering things more than meals mm-hmm. that people can help with. Because maybe you're not a cook. Yeah. Right. That's right. one of the things I don't do. I don't you, do you don't you I don't, don't do enjoy that. cooking. But you might be willing to go mow their lawn. Yeah. You might be willing to help like take their kid home from practice because you're already taking your own kid home from practice. Right. It's it's not a big deal, and mm-hmm. you would love to do it. And everyone has different gifts that they can offer. Mm-hmm. And remembering that um, people are pretty good about saying no when it's something that they can't right. do. Right, right. And that's a phrase that, that we've kind of picked up in our family is don't say no for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, Trust me good. enough to be able to tell you no when I truly can't. Mm-hmm. So please ask. Don't tell me no. Or don't, don't say no assume. for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And so that's, yeah. Man, that's cool. All right. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining us, being on here. How, so if somebody needs to set up a website for somebody in their life that's going through crisis, where do they go? How do they do that? Um, Great question. Yeah. It is, first of all, it's free. And they go to. That's even better. Whatfriendsdo.com. And they click create a team. And we will step them through really quick and easy questions to get everything set up. And um, here's, here's where they're going to have hurdles. They don't always know where their friend needs help. Mm-hmm. Um, but send us a message. We have a live chat available. Mm-hmm. And we help people all day, every day with this kind of stuff. That's awesome. And ask us. We're really happy to say, well, what other things might your friend need help with? Um, do they have kids? Do they have pets? Do they have a house? Mm-hmm. Do they need right. transportation to and from appointments? Because, again, maybe they don't need just food. Right. Mm-hmm. So, right. So if they have any questions, use the live chat feature and we'll help them out. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, you, you've got a friend or a family member who's going through crisis. Right. Who's having a hard time asking for help. Yes. You're trying to help them. Don't have a hard time asking for help there either because Correct. you guys have walked the road. We do this all day, <laughs> every day. Y'all are idea generators. You've got, yes. you've been there, you've seen it, you know what helps. That's Thank wonderful. You. And how do we find you on the podcast? Um, we are on all of your favorite podcast places um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. um, What Friends Do, Kitchen Chats. Kitchen Chats. Yeah. And yeah. I hear there's a very special episode on YouTube with the with the lovely cat in the background. So if you if you check out our YouTube channel, <laughs> um, the very first episode is um, called "The First Person You Call in Crisis," mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the first person I call is my sister. Um, she is my sister, so she you know gets special stuff like that. Plus, she happens to be um, a mental health therapist, so she has a lot of go. great strategies. And we were diving into some really um, I think we were talking actually about the night our dad died and Mm. when people came to the kitchen to support us Mm. and super heartfelt, meaningful conversation. Like we're both crying and um, my cat's jumping up in the background in the window (laughs) um, because he needed to be let in right at that very moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, that's pretty much the story of my life right there. I mean, all that to to say people, life is real. Right. Uh Just because somebody's behind a microphone or, Behind a camera, or uh-huh. either one. Life is real. Life and is real. Yeah, there's yeah. there's cats jumping up in the background, bang, banging on the door to be let in. Um, yeah. All that fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. Is there a way to um, you know where where can people follow you? Do you have any social, any things yeah, like, like that, or are you just like no, just leave me. I'm I'm proud. I would love it if they'd follow us. Um, we are most active on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. okay. And um, but for a conversation around business. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn all the time. Okay. Okay. So please follow me there. So um, what friends do on Facebook and Instagram, Instagram. and you can follow what friends do on LinkedIn or f- um, connect with me personally. Yeah. Very Great. cool. Very we'll cool. Put some links in the show notes. Yeah, we will. Well, so, thank thanks. you again. Thanks again. And so thanks for we just, uh, I, you know, if you're listening, I hope that you will lean into resources like this. Yes, um, for sure. This We've, is amazing. You know, I've seen firsthand. I've been the recipient firsthand, mm-hmm. and also, you know, helped other people uh, through these moments. And man, it's it's hard to navigate. It mm-hmm. is. And 
people like you bringing resources to the world is amazing. Thank you, it makes Thank you for doing so much that. easier. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Thanks for letting me share. Yeah. Well, you guys, thanks for tuning in today. Hop over to leadingisserving.com and uh, give us a rating, a review. Um, go check out what friends do, Kitchen Catch. Kit Kitchen Cats. Kitchen Cats. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's going to be my, that's like, the new, one. the new spoof. Absolutely. Oh, my daughter who lives in Denver is going to love this because she calls every day. She's like, I just called to FaceTime the cats. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you too. That's here. that's the new kitchen cats. There you the go. Kitchen cats. There we go. Anyway, kitchen go cats. check us out. <laughs> Send us a message and uh, yeah. Thanks for listening, yes. guys. Y'all are great. Thanks. We'll see you Have next a good time. Day. Bye.